right here. Please welcome Ross Schaefer. Yeah. Come on, keep it going, ladies and gentlemen, for Mr. Ross Schaefer. Please welcome Ross Schaefer. Thank you very, very much. Well, I wish we had time for a show, but the introduction ran long. I am, uh, I am thrilled. Oh, you're, you're some of you back here too. Hi. <laughs> uh, I'm very happy to be here. It was a uh, an arduous six-hour journey for me. I uh, drove in from Cambridge. They say that the uh, construction started just after the tea party. <laughs> and uh, there's a sign, I don't know if you saw the sign by the Callahan Tunnel. Did you see the sign that says, uh, Rome wasn't built in a day. If it had been, we'd have hired their contractor. <laughs> I must tell you, a, uh, it's always enlightening for me to come to a group like this because uh, to, to hear executives in $1,500 suits backstage saying, can you believe cereal's in three-pack? <laughs> Thank you. Ross Schaefer is one of the nation's most sought-after corporate entertainers and keynote speakers because his humor is always clean, relevant, and able to adapt to any group or situation. Did you enjoy the work? It, at times he enjoyed the work. See, these are great welder, framer, these are electrician, great men's jobs. Oh, I love, there's some jobs men shouldn't do. Ice dancing is one. <laughs> Those poor, because even if you're the best in the world, you have to skate around that sequined outfit, and then another guy, if you win, the guy skates over with roses for you. <laughs> Wouldn't happen in the welding job, would it? No, sir, <laughs> they wouldn't say, hey, you know, this guy did one heck of a job over here. He welded up 19 buildings today, so me and the fellas chipped in and got you some flowers. <laughs> like, he's, he's working along and then falls down, rips his leg wide open. I'll bet if the crew was around, you just said, that's all right, I'll walk it off. I'll walk it off. <laughs> I'm fine, I'm fine. <laughs> if I would smack my thumb with a hammer, Happens a lot, still have a flattened knuckle here because of it. Crew's there, it's no big deal. I would, I would just try to laugh it off. <laughs> that was a good one there, boy. <laughs> yeah, I think it's broke. <laughs> hammer that other hammer. Come on, let's get back to work. But you women know if he gets hurt at home. And there are no men to witness this. Where's your big stud man now? I, it's so hilarious, I think, when guys at home and he hits his chin on the coffee table or uh, hits his head in the corner of a kitchen cabinet. This is the worst. This is the abs. Now, I swear, he's been winged by shrapnel. Right? Walks through the house. Uh, sweetheart, what did you happen to do with that? Oh, God. Ah. Bless it. Ah. Ah. It's, ow. <laughs> no, I'm not all right. Well, you left it open and I hit my head, that's what happened. Don't touch it, don't touch it, don't touch it. I'm gonna lay down, let me lay down for a while. Ah. Uh. Who else, anybody else? Anyone else can think, oh, back here? Is this your husband right here? Oh, great. 
All right, and your names are? Lauren. And Gail. All right, Ga I'm sorry? Lonchevsky. All right, and what does uh, Lauren do? Um, he always wants to take a shower with me. Lauren saving water. <laughs> I hate to break it to you. And then, then what they do is they take you over to an arena area with your expert assistant, and they weigh you and strap on your ankles a Velcro harness. And I think of Velcro. This isn't enough Velcro. They should be drilling a long bolt through my ankles. <laughs> Torquing it down with lug nuts and lock washers. I don't like this. So I take off my leather belt and I wrap that around and cinch it up just for extra security for me. Okay. Now, me and my expert assistant get into this cage, which is attached to a crane that's going to go up 50, 100, 150, 200 feet above the fairgrounds. This is 20 stories up with a rubber band velcroed to my ankles. I look down, and there's one of those inflatable stuntman mats that you've seen in the movies, those pad things, but it's not under the bungee jump. It is closer to the Ferris wheel next door. And I must have had absolute terror in my eyes because the expert assistant says, oh, don't worry, dude, the wind will blow you into that. <laughs> yeah, I get a good look at my expert assistant now. He's 15 years old on loan from the Tilt-A-Whirl. <laughs> giving me trajectory advice to my dad, but People are chanting, bungee, bungee, bungee. I don't want to back out. I do what they say. They say, look at the horizon and just fall off into midair and trust the cord. <laughs> this is, as I think, as close as we can come to a leap of faith. When you leave the platform, you have never experienced such deafening silence in your life. Everything starts, I mean, if you're a man, it takes a while for your life to flash because you're going up the hill, but <laughs> once it starts, Everything starts coming back. All those bad Christmas gifts that you got, all those insulting remarks little girls would give you on the playground, your credit card balances come flashing back that fast. I mean, it's that fast. The problem is your life is gone. You've still got 160 feet to go. You're plummeting face first toward Earth, and the bungee cord snaps you to a halt three feet before impact. Three feet before impact. And it was at that moment I wished I'd kept my belt on my pants. <laughs> and, now, and now I've read that if you bungee jump a lot, if you actually uh, or do it many, many times,